What's up, everybody? Blue Gabe. We're here at the Mariposa Ranch. Did I say it right? Yes, sir. Say it with your slang. Mariposa. Mariposa. This is a 45,000 acre low fence ranch here in South Texas. This is our guide, Felipe. And we're headed after Neil Guy, which is an antelope from Asia that was brought here in Texas in 1920 to some zoos, released into the wild in the 30s, and now they roam. I got a bunch of them. A everywhere. bunch of them. And supposedly they're really, really, really good to eat. Christopher set this particular trip up and he owns a seasoning blend that tonight we're going to take back to one of his chefs that's a huge barbecue guy, travels all over Texas cooking and says he can make an amazing dish. But this isn't your typical hunt. We're going to actually shoot. We flew in so that gun was on an airplane. We want to make sure it was right. We're actually going to be hunting out of a truck because this place is so big and so vast and these animals are pretty sketch, right? Oh, yeah. How yeah. long will we have to shoot? We got like around maybe 10 to 15 seconds. Seconds. That's it. Now, some people might say that's unethical, but that's how we're hunting. It's ethical. These animals have all this dense mesquite. They can go anywhere they want, and they are completely wild. So we're here for the meat. The hunt is just a bonus. We want this Neil guy meat. So I'm shooting a 6.5. We also have a 308. We're going to check, make sure they're both on before we start this. Which are you shooting, the one left? The 25 right? on the left, center okay. mass. So the uh, thing is right in the book where the bullseye is at. Yep, right under it, looks right like. Right under it. Yeah. Well, first shot was dead on at 25. It's in the diamond? Yeah. On the diamond, top of the diamond. So we're hunting now. We're literally leaving the range hunting. This whole entire ranch is one consecutive giant mass chunk of woods. What Felipe is explaining to us is these Neil guy, as soon as they see us, they're gone. A lot of people will say, well, why don't you just get out and go find them? Well, there's not millions of them. And this place is so big, the only ethical way to do it, where we're like from out of town, we only have four hours to hunt, is to do it in a truck. So. If we pull up to them and they're facing away, feeding away, we can get out and stalk. If they're facing us and it's the bull that we need to shoot, we're shooting him out the window at this truck. And for all you boys in the south, y'all have already done that a million times anyway, so don't be judging. <laughs> Kelly, what about the turkeys this morning? Dude. Hold on a second. I don't know where my shotgun was, but... <laughs> Let me show y'all a clip of when we were leaving the lodge this morning. So Kelly has been turkey hunting her butt off, being very patient but hasn't had a shot yet. She filmed me kill mine, and then this happened this morning. Good. I could have killed four in one shot. <laughs> that would have been a pile of money, if you know what I mean. Oh my gosh, yeah. Well, that's a good sign. We've only been hunting for like four minutes and just saw four juveniles. They're actually right out the window. Oh, there goes a big one right over there running. He just run right into the trees. Black one? Yeah, these like things right are there. sketched. You can see how thick this place is though. Look at the deer. In Florida, we shoot out of the truck a lot too, but you gotta like shoot it, grab it, and run like <laughs> Dickens. So, the crazy thing about these Neil guy is they always poop in the same spot, and that's sort of to show their dominance. You can see there's old poop, really old poop, really fresh, sticky poop. We know there's been a Neil guy here because we just seen him when we drove by. Me? The big one? Ah! Too busy playing with poop. It smells like Neil guy poop. So our first spot in stock was a bust. He said these big mature bulls are smart. He wasn't joking. We are going to get one before we leave here. Female. 
the right of the tree. Mm -hmm. Wait, let me zoom in. Stand still. Yeah, so she's looking back at something. Yeah, usually we see them right in there. Oh, that's a white tail. Is a white tail? Two white tails. Trotting off. Sounds like you're the you're the dominant bird there. Uh, Y'all see that? They knew Blue Gobby was here. They're like, peace out. <laughs> see how the deer in front of us, babe? Yeah. Ram, are you looking good out there? Oh yeah, I'm scanning the whole place, bro. You see another cow? Oh, she's with a baby. I see him laying yeah. down on the left. Yeah, they just laid down right in front of us. Yeah, but there's another cow over here. Over here. I see her. She looking at us? Yep. Mm -hmm. She's standing right there. Oh, yeah, I see that. She's in between the two moo cows. Don't think I won't shoot a cow if I need to. All right, so we've been riding around now for about an hour. We've seen tons of whitetails, saw some javelinas, a bunch more gobblers. And I'm probably gonna have to get Kelly a bird before we leave here today because she can't stand it. And now we're just riding. This place is huge. Look what I found. This place is amazing. We've been driving for hours and now we just came up in this huge like hilly area. You can see for miles, but there's little dips. So just because you can see for miles don't mean there's not animals out there because they can be in any of these little dips. Not far back that way we saw those last three cows. But seeing this makes me realize just how crazy it is for the people coming across the border. Ram's telling us, and so was Felipe, that they find people out here dead all the time. You could get out here, and if the sun's not out and you can't tell which direction you're going, you would be lost in an instant. There's no water, there's no food source. I could only imagine. I'm so thankful to live somewhere where I don't have to make that crazy sacrifice of just literally getting on my feet and walking to go find a better life. I mean, God, just from here to the horizon over there would take days to walk. If you didn't have water. Mm. We've got whitetails over here on top of the hill right now. Dude, there, he's going behind the bush right now. I never knew I'm going to take a ride again. I think so. The 
wind is perfect. It's coming from him to us. been on this bull for like 30 minutes. Some deer scared him and sent him into this mesquite thicket. And we're hoping we can now slip in there. The wind's perfect still. We thought we were gonna have it done about an hour ago. Hopefully this is the time. Well, my first Neil guy is hit. He took that bullet pretty well. I don't know, now, I don't wanna push him too hard. I hit him quartering, huh? If you did, you got him good. Quartering away, he'll come, the bullet will come out of the left side of the chest. Let's go up here and see if we can't see him. I'll give him time. You don't wanna ease in there, maybe he's standing there? It's your call. I'm gonna say that we wait a little bit. It's, it's he's right here. We definitely saw him run. This bulls gave us a run for our money. Do you hear it hit him? Oh yeah, you hit. Here, just hold on. Is he limpy? He's running good. That's gotta be him. That's 
I didn't even think about not knowing if it was him or not. Yeah, no, no, that's it. There's too many bulls here, bro. You need to be very careful. Come here. You already found him? No. That's him. Huh? That's him. Long blood. Good. Good. That is him. He's going to be in training the big time. I told you. They run far. Tough. They're super tough, bro. I wasn't exaggerating. Either. You guys, I shot him quarter and away. I don't know if Kelly got on him or not because it was so thick. There's a lot of blood right here, and he absorbed that creed more and just got up and run off to where Ram said, I don't think that's him. We've seen so many bulls today. I could have shot him again, but immediately when he said that, I'm like, oh my God, that could be a different bull. We can afford to take that risk. Yeah. We got confirmation. That's lung blood. We just need to give him time, bro. Yeah. He's a big animal. Well, that caliber, he's going to bleed and turn on. Hey, I will bring out the inner Aborigine Indian bloodhound in Blue Gobby if I need to. Oh, yeah. That's good that he laid down. He didn't go 100 yards and he laid down. We re-jumped him, which sometimes can be a good thing because if they lay up and coagulate immediately, that internal bleeding will stop, but you get him running and it starts opening up the valves. It's like a big old scab. I say we just mark where we're at, back out for an hour. Yeah, exactly. I'll give it 30 minutes. Let's, let's come back. Oh my five. goodness, you know what? Here, here's a real Texas tree. What? Dude, it's chocolate covered raisin. Stop. So literally, you just. Ew. You just ew. Ew. Hey, you want one? Gabe, you're disgusting. Babe, and think, like, you're all into all natural food. This is as organic as it gets. These guys were eating a gland in the neck of a cow that glands like clean their Sweet this, bread. This is literally this. With no nutritional value. This? Yeah, this has a little bit of gut, a little bit of fat. A little bit of Just smell it at least. No, thank you. Tell you. What did you get for Christmas when you This is why boy? this is why I remind you to brush your teeth every morning and night. People are like, how did Blue Gobby get a hot chick and he puts poop in his mouth? <laughs> this is true. Sometimes. But certain things gross people out. Poop doesn't gross me out. Now, dog poop? Yeah, you checked it before it's dry. Oh, yeah. I can put a fresh one in your mouth. <laughs> it's so weird that these animals poop on top of each other, so they, like, congregate where they poop. Like, imagine if humans did that. Oh, look, Ram's pooping. Hold on, let me run over there and poop on top of him. They poop in the same spot, so whoever's pooping here is the only one pooping there. Oh. Oh. Sanitary, that's what I said. That's not how it goes at my house. Everybody poops in the same spot. <laughs> it's hot. Dude, it <laughs> is so blistering hot. Give it a half hour. That definitely looks like lung blood, doesn't it? Oh yeah, for sure. If we would have given him time, we would have found him dead right here. Or not, like you said, open up the valves. My feet are burning up in these rubber boots. We have 10% battery life. We will see y'all in about 30 minutes, but realistically, it's gonna be right now when we're back on the track. We're just where you saw us. What do we got here? Hold on, first, turn around and show the sunset real quick. Come right here where you can see over Ram's shoulder. Look at that. You know what this reminds me of? Huh? That animal right there, Whoops. give him a glimpse, Whoop. is a tough dude's all I can tell you. We've been tracking him for like two hours and I just had to shoot him again. I know it's windy, the sun's setting. This is a Neil guy. Crazy, crazy horns. Ram, explain to them what makes them mature. All right, so once they start pointing out and uh, making these, uh, getting these um, real significant edges right here, these corners, that's when you know one's already matured out. Look at this mohawk. <laughs> He's got a pretty nice little beard too. It was no joke, 100 degrees when I shot yeah. him. He's mm. bloated. We need to get him gutted. We need him to get him back to the, to the cleaning shack before it gets dark because I'm actually gonna mount him and we gotta cape him out. We gotta properly take care of this meat because this is supposedly the best wild game meat there is period arguably the best there is so it, his hide is insanely beautiful as i hate to say the word devil but he's got some devilish looking oh horns yeah. 
for, I mean, he's mature. He sucked this 6.5 Creedmoor up with the best of them. But ultimately, we won the battle. He paid the sacrifice, and we're going to eat him. So these glands right here are poisonous, Gabe. You can't eat them. For real? <laughs> yeah. All this sugar's poisonous. I'll Bro, y'all had me eating sweet bread last night. <laughs> Some nasty brain looking stuff. <laughs> uh, and then I got Kelly to eat it, and she's like, oh, it's good. I'm like, that's brain. She's like, mm. Mm. <laughs> You'll have to watch the turkey hunting video, which is the video before this, to see her almost gag. Well, big shout out to Ram. Anything you need, fishing, hunting, if you need your nails done, Ram is your man. Texas King Outdoors, I'll have all of his information in the link below. If he can't do it, he can put you in contact with somebody that can. This place is amazing. It's such a huge opportunity to get to come here. We finished it off with the trophy animal. I was getting to think that we weren't, but I didn't think we were going to find him. Good job, Gabe. Gabe. You never give up. You see my feet? You see yeah. those feet? It's crazy. Look oh. what I'm wearing. All well, you people wearing. think that I ain't tough. Look at the tips of my toes are full of cactus. I have walked seven miles in flip-flops and cactus, mesquite, rattlesnakes. Those feet are tough. South Texas blue bull, baby. I'll be picking mesquite thorns for like the next month, or Kelly will. Yep. So we'll see y'all at the lodge. You know it's a big animal when you need a tractor. All right, we're back. Ram is caping him. I am not showing you guys how to clean this animal in this video. We came too far, spent way too much money, worked too hard, put too many miles on our feet, too many people were included for it to get demonetized. We're gonna clean this animal exactly like a white-tailed deer or a wild hog. Cut around his hind legs, make a V, gut him, a V to his front legs, pull the hide off. It's literally that easy. If you want to see a cleaning video, you can go to some of my older ones or to deer meat for dinner. I think Kelly even has one. I'm not showing you this one, but we are going to a master Texas barbecue chef and he's going to make these steaks into some of the best steaks he said we'll ever eat. We'll see y'all in the kitchen. I know some of y'all are probably mad, but literally when you work as hard as we do, I know it's hard to believe YouTubers work hard, but we do. We came from Florida. We've traveled Rams drove us over four or five hundred miles since we've been here. We've turkey hunted and now we've hunted this thing all day long. All right, really quick before we get to where we're going to cook, I want to show you some footage that Kelly filmed while we were looking for my bull. We had all spread out looking for him. Kelly was on her own and these three bulls run out right in front of her. And it was the first time any of us had got an opportunity to see him up close. And I wanted to show you guys because in this video, I really didn't have any great up close footage of him, but what you're watching right now. This is the smartest, strongest animal I've ever had the opportunity to hunt. And I can't wait to go back and do it again. Now, let's go cook. Y'all check out that Neil guy tenderloin. Now we're gonna cook the rest when we get home. We're gonna put it on the airplane and bring it back with us. So it's been marinating for like 30 minutes. Check that color out. It's like tuna. That's where we just trimmed the That's silver meat yeah. off. It's amazing. We didn't do it as soon as we got home because we were tired, covered in ticks. Mm -hmm. Kelly on oh, behind the camera. Straight, up. <laughs> straight oh. up. We got some footage of that we're gonna show oh later. Gosh. Should we show them some? I'll probably get that. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you that. That's I'm great. over there like chimpanzees how they pick <laughs> ticks off Kelly's hair. That's just grossing everybody out when we're doing <laughs> it. Oh my God. So Eric and Christopher own this seasoning company. That's right. And one thing about South Texas is I've always been intimidated by the way they cook. South Texans are real blunt with their mesquite and their barbecuing and I cook on a Traeger pellet grill, whatever, it doesn't matter. This seasoning brings South Texas to wherever you're at. If you're in Michigan, California, Florida, or in Texas, it's not me trying to sell it. It's now that we've been eating it for two days. Literally, you don't need mesquite wood to cook on. You don't need crazy charcoal. And this will bring South Texas to you. Trust me when I say that. So we're just gonna go light with this. This animal was walking about four hours ago. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> now, we did marinate it in a little bit of orange juice and um, what else? Uh, some Italian zesty dressing. Yeah. Just, just to get out some of that flavor. Just to get out a little bit of the gaming flavor because we didn't have a hose where we were gutting it. And I know we had gut content on our hands and we didn't want that taste. 
So we barely marinated it. We're about to put it on the grill. The lighting's bad out there, so I'm gonna show you. He's putting it on mesquite wood on a natural grill. Then we're gonna bring it back in here. Like, I could probably pull that apart right now. It's sushi great. Neil Guy is supposed to be some of the best meat on the planet, better than Wagyu, better than whatever you wanna eat. Neil Guy is the king of all, supposedly the best. Let's take it outside. Let's go, let's do this. Y'all check this out, all natural mesquite. What'd you call it? It's called carbon. Yeah, my tongue. Carbon, don't... carbon. My tongue don't roll like that. <laughs> Car you call it carbon. Carbon. Good enough, buddy. Look at this, super hot. Two minutes on each side, we want it medium rare, seared on the outside, almost raw on the inside. Look at that. You already know it's gonna be amazing. This is a super dull knife, in case you're wondering. You see how it cut through that like butter? Mm -hmm. I want to talk about the cutting board though. Can I get one of these? Yes, you can. It is mm. cool. You guys, Ram, every trip I've been on to Texas, Ram has hooked it up. Wow. Giant Gars. Kelly's humongous, I don't even know what you call Kelly's giant Gar. My special Gar. <laughs> Dinosaur. Dinosaur. That's good. Anything you want to do in Texas, he can put you on it. Now the seasoning, why don't even, we don't even have the seasoning out here. While they're getting the seasoning, this orange corn is definitely coming back. We're gonna go to Deer Meats Ranch and put a bunch of this out because all of our animals are used to eating orange. Add corn to it and you know that's a win-win. This mesquite style barbecue is South Texas all the way. Mm, so good. It's bomb, man. Like the crave on TikTok right now on Instagram is Wagyu beef. Bro, come to Texas and kill a Neil guy. <laughs> come here, Christopher. South Texas. Oh, y'all, come here. Yeah, I more. want some of that. <laughs> it's awesome. Look at that. I'm just going to jump in right here. I got to take over the camera. You guys, I'm going to oh tell you God. something right now. My feet are tough Money. as nails, but Kelly Young's not. She didn't grow up doing this. The wind's blowing, and she's been filming all day. Right, no. Dude, in the rank stuff, and she did an A-plus job. Let's see, babe. Oh my god, it feels amazing. Dude. Just look at that though. Mm. Good. Really like good. literally straight up as good as anything you ever ever ate. Yeah. Really good. Mm. Alright, here's the camera back, boo. I'm tired. <laughs> cold. So everything I've talked about, the orange corn, the seasonings, Mr. Ram. Christopher's business, everything will be in the link below. We're gonna come back to Texas. We're gonna go red fishing. I think we're gonna shoot another Neil guy because this trip we weren't prepared to bring a, a bunch of it home. I think we're gonna drive here, kill a couple of these bad boys. Close Maybe that. an Axis deer. For sure. These Neil guy were brought here in the 30s or the 20s and then turned loose in the 30s and they run everywhere. And they're, to me, better than beef. They're all natural. They literally survive off the land. They don't eat corn. They don't eat anything that people put out. They just survive on grass. Thanks, y'all, for having us. Wow. Hello, everybody. Hey, you for having. All right. You got me. Time to get up out of here. We're heading home because next stop is Kentucky with catfish. Y'all have all seen catfish on my videos, then Nebraska, and then back to fishing. But right now, it's time to get up out of here and get the heck out of what? Dodge. Shit. <laughs> Goodball.